What's up guys, this is Marius and Green Ones bringing you the latest installment of Halo Wars co-op campaign. Today we are doing Mission 14 Reactor, where we're basically going to blow up an entire planet. Because that is how we do things. Green Ones? Hey, nothing says classy like blowing up a planet with a reactor from a spaceship. I know, right? You know. But yeah, we're, we are going to be starting right now. I'm so excited. This is actually one of my favorite missions. It's a wee bit saddening whenever you're driving up the elephant, like you chugga 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 chugga, like you're the little engine that could, and then like a bunch of floods just come out of nowhere and they're like, I want to break your metal. And you're like, I don't want to be broken. And I'll be quiet. Is this really Literally though, when the elephant's going up that hill, it's more like, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> Enough to destroy all the ships here before the Covenant can get a chance to make anything from them. Well, put simply, Captain, our reactor will cause the sun to go supernova, leaving nothing here but dust. That's the weak part of this plan, if you ask me. We've no way home without that reactor. One problem at a time, Serena. If the Covenant get their hands on these ships, it will mean the end of the war. So... If the Flood has been here this whole entire time, why haven't they just used the Covenant ships to leave, or not the Covenant ships, the, uh, Forerunner ships to leave and eat everyone? Hmm. Well, I think, uh, wouldn't they need, uh, Anders to activate those ships, though? I think we saw that in the last mission. Yeah, I think they just need a human, not specifically Anders. True. Do 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 so, can someone tell me, how does this get upright and on wheels? I guess a lot of labor. Well, I mean, like, between the time of them dropping it and us being here. You want any Spartans? Uh, no. I'm gonna focus majority aircraft on this. I feel like it would help us get around a lot quicker. Sounds like a plan. Uh, can you use Forge to drive around and find the resources? Yes. Thank you, Shane. So, Alice is Spartan 130, Jerome is Spartan 92, and Douglas is 42. Correct. You want me to build the elephant? Elefante? Uh, yeah, that'd be best. Say something, or I am a baked potato. Of a potato? Let's ride. That's new. Dude, right, right now my room literally I feel like a baked potato, like in the microwave, three minutes. Yeah. Extra butter. Pad Yesterday I got in an argument with someone. They were arguing with me that if you stuck your hand in a microwave, it wouldn't hurt you. Um, well it wouldn't, because for you to stick your hand in the microwave, you have to have the door open. Yeah, but like if we assume that the microwave is operational, like while you stuck your hand in there, it would oh. hurt you, like, really bad. It would cook you. Oh yeah, if you microwaved your hand, yes. Haven't you ever put a steak in the microwave for like, more than three minutes? Exactly. Well, how a microwave works is it takes the microwaves and they react violently with the water molecules that are in any such object. That is how it warms up your food because your food has mm -hmm. to contain water molecules and you yourself being 70% water would fry. All units. 
For a second, I totally forgot that we were actually YouTubing. <laughs> That's your science lesson of the day. Like, <laughs> oh, I just started thinking, like, this is a conversation we would have on a normal day. <laughs> the normal things we talk about, frying people in microwaves. Well, I wasn't going that direction. <laughs> And do try to avoid any unnecessary jostling. All units. A Spartan is down. Turret complete. Who's Let's down? Let's just set him there for now. Ready to roll. I'll have some aircraft coming up in a minute. I'm definitely gonna need more than Spartans to handle these. Reactor complete. A Spartan is down. Dang it, let's set you there for now as well. What do you need? Turret complete. Okay, do you think we can use our current vehicles and our Spartans to uh, take out this base? I don't think so. They have full turrets on the base and the strongest uh, power we have is the Wolverines. I think we should wait. Okay. Because uh, when I went in the first time, when you went in, I almost lost them. Overkill, not in my vocabulary. <laughs> All units. I'll get them. All right, bring the units up. Got it. Knock them down. Let's go. You bet. Horn it up. Dude, Forge is just camping the spawn point. <laughs> That's my man. All units. On my way. Where to? Ported on stick. Ready to roll. Ramming. Moving out. Oh. Just like we knew what we were doing. Totally knew what we were doing. Because we do. I'm gonna get the box. I'm bringing my Wolverine over to deal with this. Rolling. Not that I think you need it. Yeah, you got it. Can you use Forge to get those resources? Yes, sir. All units. Thank you. Let's ride. All units. I'm ready to move Shadowhawk. Alright, temporarily. Oh, why did I just call you Shadowhawk? I'm sorry, Marius. Ah, oh, you're good. We all love each other. It's okay. Very true. Sharing is caring. Especially with love and names. 
Shield armory complete. Alright, I am ready to move. Okay. Keep on waiting, waiting, waiting on the world to change. I love John Mayer. He's a very good uh, musician. I realize some people are probably oh, yeah, going to disagree with me, but. Of course, but. I think. Such is the way of life. Music is one of those things where I think no one's going to have the same taste, but I think all music is great because it gives that idea that you don't have to have the same taste to enjoy it. Yeah, definitely. That is how you take out a photo army. Heck yeah. Enemy engagement. Alright, followers are getting researched, that's good. All units. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Douglas can jump this high. Nope, he can't. I was gonna have Douglas uh, steal their vampire. I don't think I've ever seen this reactor roll down the hill. I have to agree with you, actually. I've never done so poorly in this mission to have it do that. If you want to focus on the units, I'll focus on the base. Okay. I wonder how the Covenant feel whenever, like, we straight wreck them. They're probably like, why didn't we join the UNSC? Why are these <laughs> prophets just telling us to attack people? Yeah, actually, ironically, uh, like, in the whole war and all that good stuff, um, you know how, like, the Covenant, like, they're used to, like, they usually take in the new species and make them serve them and uh, like that's the whole essence of how like they have the Sinhili which are the elites and they have the Ungoy which are the grunts and all that good stuff um like the reason why they have all of them is because like they would attack them with their superior technology pretty much like force them to the brink of annihilation and then have them uh, join them well they didn't do that with the humans because um the prophet of truth, uh, he, he was just a normal prophet, and uh, actually he wasn't even aspiring to be the uh, like leader of the whole covenant, like he probably didn't have the opportunity until he accidentally uh, discovered uh, something that uh, him, the prophet of regret, which the prophet of regret was just a, um, Back up the elephant. like a priest essentially, 
Oh, back up the elephant? Okay. Uh, never mind. You got it. Okay. We handled that a lot better than but I yeah. thought it would. Okay. But yeah, the Prophet of Regret, he was pretty much just like a really old priest, like of the San Chayum. And um, he was actually um, like the caretaker of the oracle of the. Oh, what is it called? Of the. Pui. Oh, the Covenant, their key ship, it, uh, the, the Dreadnought. Um, so there is a oracle that was on the dreadnought, but it was badly damaged when the San Shayun took the dreadnought from their home planet. And dang, it is difficult to talk. Wow. Playing Halo Wars. Annihilating everything. Yeah. I feel like it's definitely but, harder in the strategy games because you're always focusing on like, oh, what are we going to do next? Yeah, definitely. I do want to apologize yeah, so, for like the um, random five seconds of silence that we have here and there because we're thinking about how to do this. Oh, we, yeah, we're making it look a lot easier than it actually is, in a sense. Although, I do have to say that the, despite maybe some difficulty, this game is by far one of the best games I've ever played. I do have to, and I claim I that without a doubt. Same. Yeah, I know in all my heart that... This is one of my favorite memes. I think Forge died, but it's okay. So it's fine. Which is our favorite character. Yeah. I remember I never used to play as Forge, ever. And then uh, you were like, oh. Let's play Forge once or twice in multiplayer. You should try it out. It's really fun. I was like, sure. Okay, I'll try it out. I started playing him, and I got addicted to him for like a straight month. Then I went to go back and play as Anders, which is the character I normally play as, and I can't get used to playing as anybody else except Forge now because I cannot <laughs> comprehend the, like, the one basic essential that Forge gives is the acquisition of immediate double supply pads. And I can't, mm -hmm. like, I'm not used to not getting them anymore. It's weird. It really is a struggle, to be honest. Well, personally, like, I don't even aspire to play any other character but Forge, so... Yeah. I, I like playing as Anders occasionally because she has the reduced research time. And, uh, she has reduced research, she reduced cost on some items, and, uh, she has the Hawks, which is my babies. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, that was Mission 14 Reactor. We are glad you joined us today. Join us for the next episode, where I believe is the last mission, correct? Yes, it is. Where we have to ex escape a planet. Forge in the next video is going to kick the Junkadunk out of an Elite, and which is all exciting and such. Agreed. Like, hand-hand -hand combat with awesomeness. I agree. Forge is definitely one of those warriors where you don't want to mess with him. Because he will hunt you down. Especially kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, especially because he keeps a dagger in his, like, chest pocket, and you don't know it's there. The next thing you know, it's in your neck. So. I feel like you would tell him, like, why are you so paranoid? You have a dagger in your pocket. He's like, they're not, it's not being paranoid if they're actually coming to get you. But, you know. Well... To be honest, like, but before we end this, actually, uh, I once read an article, like, a, a real-life article, and uh, it was about a Marine, uh, and, like, he was out, like, in the battlefield and everything, and actually, he is the first man ever in the history of the world to ever get a confirmed kill with an MRE spoon. An MRE a is spoon? a meal ready to eat in the military. Yeah, and it's, like, this plastic spoon, and he had it, like, in his, um, like, like in his tactical suit and like he was going like they were about to breach a building and everything and like uh, so what happens is like you know how like they line up and they get prepared and everything yeah and so like all five of them like they uh burst through uh there's um like 
gunfire is being discharged like these people are attacking them they're attacking these people and like it, it's a full raid pretty much and so what happens is like they break through and like uh they're taking out the enemies they're neutralizing them and then uh, at some point like they thought they took everyone down but uh one of the people is still moving he throws a grenade in the middle of the room and like so i don't know how it happened but like in, in the article like Somehow they survive the grenade, and then uh, like the guy is running out of uh, out of the room. So uh, this man he chases after him, like tackles him. He's trying to fight him, and uh, like he's still disoriented from the grenade. And uh, like the guy, like he lost all of his weapons. Like his knife fell off his uh, like suit, and like he doesn't have his gun. And uh, the marine, like he pulls out his MRE spoon, and this other guy has like daggers like he's trying to stab him and he whips out his MRE spoon and stabs the guy repetitively in the eye oh my gosh yeah and like he killed him with an MRE spoon well, that's... so a meal ready to eat certainly uh well that's certainly a very resourceful way to kill somebody yeah I feel like Forge is the type of guy that would do that oh yeah he'd be like sitting down eating like a pudding cup Arbiter would come, just be like, "Hey, dude, I'm here to kill you," and he would um, it, it would. <laughs> truth, down the truth be told, this is how it would happen. He would be sitting down on the couch eating his uh, pudding, and it would be like Modern Warfare 2. Have you ever seen the end where uh, they kill, where he kills Shepard, yes. or throwing the knife in his eye? Like, he would just be like that with the spoon. Like he would just, he would just take the spoon and throw it like the knife in, into Shepard's eye. I, yeah, I, I, I feel like he, he he would like stand up, set down the pudding cup, and just throw the spoon at the arbiter. Like you see, like the three sixty motion, and just hits the arbiter, and he just drops. Yeah, that's so great. Well, <laughs> we'll get to learn more about Forge next episode on the Hail Wars campaign. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time. This is Marius and Greenbloods signing off, saying good luck and take care.